came across the field on the other side of the Midwest LSA Expo talking with Mike Thomason. It's good to see you, Dan. And yeah. he is a volunteer here at the show, so that's a great thing because yeah. we need a lot of volunteers. We need an army of them, so thank you very much for doing that part of it. I'm glad to be here. But thanks also for bringing your cool little fire star here. And Firefly. Firefly. I'm sorry, yeah. Firefly, yeah. yes. Yeah. And I'm particularly pleased to see that you got the wings all folded back because I know that's an attribute to the Cove airplanes that inspires a lot of people. It does. And uh, so it's fun to see them in this particular mode. Of course, we've seen them the other way a lot, but this is your personal airplane. It is. It was built by uh, Brian Milburn for okay. a gentleman uh, who was about 80 years old in Michigan who wanted to get back into flying. And he uh, didn't fly, uh, felt he couldn't keep up with the airplane, and but he pulled it around and Brian flew it for him. And then he got married and his wife ended his flying career. and. Uh, I bought the plane and trailer from him, and I was uh, learning to fly uh, Quicksilver uh, along at that time, and uh, transitioned to this one, went over and took some lessons in a Cobra uh, from Brian Milburn to get the tail wheel uh, all lined out, and I started flying the ultralight. Well, that makes an interesting thing, because I've long said some comments about tail draggers, and I won't repeat them right now, yeah. but you did fly, and we're going to go talk about the Quicksilver mm -hmm. that's right next right. to us here, which is, of course, a tricycle gear and Absolutely. a very easy machine to operate. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about how it was for you to go from a tricycle gear Quicksilver to the tail dragger Firefly. Well, it was, uh, uh, Alan Lehman was my instructor. He did a good job because he knew I was going to fly the Cove. I had purchased it already. And so Alan, in all of his instruction, talked to me about what's different about what I was doing from what I was going to do. And uh, so he really did a good job of instruction, uh, and I knew sort of what to expect. Now, when I got in the Cobra, which has a castering but center lock tail wheel, right. oh, and it was a windy day at the Cobra factory. Ah, yes, I got right. in there with Brian, uh, I made a couple circles uh, <laughs> <laughs> to get it all straightened out uh, and to get doing what I was supposed to do. Not bad. Brian gave me a couple hours of instruction and I'm going to let you go. <laughs> now, the other thing about the difference between that Cobra and this Firefly is, is it, the Firefly wheel, unless you've made a modification, does not cast. It's not a free wheel. No, it's not. And so, but the difference is, is, is some in your taxi, uh, Cobes don't ground loop very easily, at least this one doesn't. And uh, uh, you have, uh, uh, the difference is in your takeoff, because you're definitely, you're definitely going to be rudder with your P factor. The it's expression gonna be, usually is, you have happy feet in a Happy tailgate. feet. You're going to be. those feet going. You're dancing. You're going to be all right. Don't and move And that shouldn't lot. put anybody off about flying one, by the way. Well, because, it doesn't. And the other no. part about the Cobra yeah. that makes it a particularly easy tail dragger is that there's not some big steep exactly. angle here. This yeah. nose is way up yeah. in the air. So that's why they don't tend to have much of a tendency to ground loop either because they're kind of not a tail dragger. It just happens to have a wheel in the right. rear. Right. When you bring the tail up, then it's tail dragger. That, in, in the Firefly now. Now, when you bring the tail up, you're, you're taking off in a tail dragger. When you're landing, you're in a tail dragger before you get it set down. So that part of it so is the same. are you doing good three-point landings? Uh, I don't even try three-point landings <laughs> anymore. You? All my landings are uh, dead stick. Uh, that's the way I landed. Yeah. And, uh, Perfect. Uh, I landed all dead stick. I, you, when I, because I think I learned in the Quicksilver, I was at first doing uh, three-point landings. But I found out it's much easier to land the cold if you just bring it in right to the runway, keep it flying, it shuts off, it sets down, the tail wheel goes down. Very easy. It's not uh, very far off the ground, even when you're level. Exactly. I've put right. it at maybe a foot or so. Exactly. So it doesn't have exactly. to drop no, down too much. No, no. They're a real nice air, airplane to fly. Now, is this one, and I see you got a parachute on it, I always love to see that. Yeah. Uh, and this looks like, is this a 503 on here? Oh, no, no. It wouldn't be legal if it was. It's okay. a 447. Next question yeah. I was going to ask yeah. you then, if it's got the 447, it could be legal. Is it illegal? It is legal. All Brian right. says it is. I've never weighed it. But, well, uh, yeah, he's a pretty he honest sort, so. The, yeah. They designed it that way. It has nothing on it that would make it not legal. When they put this on, my understanding is they get a little more weight. They added the brakes, which I think is a great safety factor. Yeah, they has been uh, for me. It certainly kept me out of the fence a couple of times, especially learning. FAA uh, allows 24 pounds yeah. of additional weight for the parachute without making you take it off yeah. to weigh it without it because yeah. that would be potentially unsafe. So they right. just said, look, we'll just add 24 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. So you take the 254 that's uh, the minim maximum empty weight of an right. ultralight, right. and you add 24 pounds for the parachute, you get yeah. 278, yeah. and if this weighs less than that, well yeah. fine, then you can yeah. actually add yeah. things like yeah. brakes, and right. as long as you stay within that number, yeah. and yeah. you fly at it, I know these 
It looks like a pretty sleek machine. It looks real sleek with the wings well, back, of course. It, but, it, uh, but it actually doesn't fly all that fast. It stays within the ultra It's, weight, it's uh, within the, in that speed limit. Yep. Yeah. Which 55. 60, 53 miles an hour, 55 knots. This uh, 55 mile an hour, take off at 55, land at 55. I do land uh, faster than that, most generally, because I'm about 210 or 15. So I'm, I've got this at the, at the limit, at the posted uh, uh, weight limit. So I, I want to keep my speed up. That's where your accidents happen, and it'll land at 65 the same. How many landings you got in the airplane now? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I've got about 143 hours, 143 and so hours I've got probably, uh, I've probably got 200 landings. I don't have to check my logbook. But, Real good. Uh, uh, it's a ball to fly. And I'll tell you why I brought it here. Uh, one reason is because my cousin is Chris, and he's uh, running the show, but uh, he was talking about he couldn't get the light guys to come. He just has tried, but fellas, well, you need to show Well, it's called the LSA show, yeah, so I, I kind know. of understand that <laughs> Well, bit. I do, but a lot of guys that have come up here said, hey, I heard the cold was going to be here. I wanted to see it. They Excellent. stopped and talked about the Quicksilver all day long, so I hope all of you guys come. I really do. I want to urge you to come. But I wanted to show people uh, that you can fly uh, and not be a rich guy. You can fly and fly for not pennies, but uh, you can get training and you can fly something. It's, I call this the John boat of the air. If you had a John boat, you'd get out on the lake, on the river, you tool around, you see how your neighbors are doing, you see what's going on around here and around, and that's what I do. You go do a little aerial sightseeing. A little aerial the sightseeing. The John boat guys, he's stuck. He's yeah. down there on yeah. the ground. <laughs> yeah. You can't see very far. No. You can see forever. <laughs> exactly. And, I, uh, and for the, you know, I'm still, I'm 58 years old, I still step outside my house to watch a plane go over. Even if I think I know what it is, I step out there to watch it. And the greatest joy that I have is lifting off that runway and get in the air. Watching the ground sink yeah. away. The ground sinks away, the world looks better. Thanks so much for bringing your airplane Thanks out so here much, and letting man. us see it. Thank you. And letting some other folks yeah. see it on Thanks so much. all over the place. Appreciate your work. Dan, Dan Johnson here reporting at the Midwest LSA Expo.